Okay, we're continuing our football club history series. We're starting with today's series of videos on Fulham uh, Football Club, uh, nicknamed the Cottagers. They play at Craven Cottage, current capacity of 25,700. Uh, they are actually the oldest club in London. Uh, they are founded way back in 1879. Uh, and their first name was Fulham St Andrews Church Sunday School FC. Yes, yes, that's a bit of a bit of a long name. Uh, but by 1896, they've moved to Craven Cottage. Uh, in 1898, they've gained professional status and joined the Southern League system. And by 1907, they are a football league club. In their first season in the Football League is where they have one of the records that they want to lose. They have the record loss in an FA Cup semi-final, which was a 6-0 to Newcastle United. In 1926, this is an interesting fun fact, um, they were the first team to sell hot dogs at their food stands. So when we have match day food today, when we get the burger and chips, or the pie and chips, hot dog and chips, or whatever it may be, 1926, they were the first uh, British team to sell hot dogs. So there you go, that's a fun fact I put in into their history. Their lowest ever point on, on the league ladder was between 94 and 97, where they played in what is now League 2, the old Division 3, which would have been the old Division 4 before the Premier League days, between 1994 and 1997. And their lowest league finish was 17th in that division. And then the Al Fayed era begins, and they do their rapid ascent to the Premier League. The first time around on Mohamed Al Fayed. Uh, it's in this period they make the Europa League final. Uh, Roy Hodgson is manager, then Mark Hughes becomes manager. They have some very, very good players in that team. And then he sells the team to Saheed Khan in 2013. And uh, the Saheed Khan era has been a bit more of a yo-yo club. In the period that Saheed Khan has owned the club, they, as the ownership group, have tried to buy Wembley. Uh, and um, the team has gone up and down as a yo-yo club between the Championship and the Premier League. And it was in the Al Fayed era they had their highest ever league finish of seventh. So, in total, they've spent 27 seasons in the top flight since they've entered the Football League system in 1907. Uh, they did ground share with Loftus Road since they've been a Football League club between 2002 and 2004, while Craven Cottage was redeveloped. And I did see a lot of games at uh, Loftus Road for both QPR and Fulham during this period, because they were redoing the main stand. Massive redevelopment at Craven Cottage. Now, they've never won any silverware. This is another club that has come close and has failed really to, to kick on and take that next step. And in 2009-2010 was their best opportunity. So they were FA Cup runners-up in the 1974-75 season as a second division club at the time. Uh, which, at the time, not unusual to have a, a team outside the top flight win the FA Cup. It did happen a lot. It's the Europa League runners-up in 2009-2010. That, again, was their window of opportunity. They were a very decent side at the time under Roy Hodgson. They finished seventh the season before in the Premier League. So they were starting to take the right steps on the way to win silverware, and they lost to Atletico Madrid in that final. And I remember watching that final in a gentleman's club at silly o'clock in the evening. Um, very interesting story behind that. There was some adulting going on and a bit of alcohol in the system. Mostly Jaeger bombs, I believe. I think I was drinking a lot of Jaeger at the time. And I remember watching that final. And also, as I said, their highest ever league finish was 7th in the 2008-2009 season. Now, if it wasn't for Fulham, we don't get Chelsea, their biggest rivals. Because in 1910, Chelsea are formed when uh, Stamford Bridge is built. Uh, by the then Fulham owner to try and actually move Fulham from Craven Cottage to Stamford Bridge. In the end, it doesn't work out. They stay at Craven Cottage and Chelsea is formed uh, in, 20, uh, in, in 1910. Biggest rivals, obviously. Their second biggest rivals are QPR. And when they did that ground share at Loftus Road, there was some concern that, hang on a second, this, this could backfire if they were in the same division, which they weren't because Fulham were a Premier League club and QPR were a, I believe, a championship at one point, the League One club at the time. Their other rivals, big rivals in West London, are Brentford, which we've done a video on. And then, very interestingly, and this is to do with their, their play in the lower leagues, since they haven't played each other since 2001, Gillingham. Gillingham is one of, considered by Fulham fans, big rivals from their lower league days. Uh, there was a lot of disorder at games, uh, very feisty games on the field, and a Fulham fan did die at a game uh, about 30, 40 years ago, between a game between Gillingham and Fulham. Very feisty rivalry historically, even though they haven't played each other for over 20 years. So there we go. There's a brief history of Fulham Football Club, a team that had an opportunity to win silverware and came up short. Another team that has massively, I wouldn't say underachieved, but has been 
yeah, I would say underachieved, actually. I think it's the best way to describe Fulham. Uh, they're good, but they're not great, but they're not terrible in recent times. But they have been bad, but they haven't been amazing. Middling. Middling is a fair way to describe Fulham for most of their Premier League existence. However, under the current ownership, they have become a yo-yo club. Is this the season they actually have back-to-back Premier League seasons under the current ownership? We shall wait and see. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll have some more content for you very, very soon.